Okay. Good morning, folks. Uh, we're going to get started here. Um, we have a packed agenda, so we're going to try to keep it on schedule. So to all the speakers, you're going to have 23 minutes to close your session, including Q&A. You'll be booted out, and we'll have like two minutes to transition to the next speaker. So please have your computer ready to just plug in here. And we're going to have to be doing this uh, you know, in a diligent tempo. Okay. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to our first speakers. Thank you, Georgie. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming this early. Uh, so we're going to talk about Bryce Canyon system improvements. I'm going to try using a laser pointer. I hope you guys can see the pointer. So we're going to talk about Bryce Canyon system improvements. Uh, I have my colleagues, Yang, Saket, and CK as well from different disciplines who worked on the chassis. Uh, but before we go into the improvements from what we announced last year, uh, we're going to also show why we built Bryce Canyon sort of a recap before we go into the design changes so that it's easy to perceive the design changes. So Bryce Canyon is our latest uh, storage chassis. It's a single chassis that can house uh, different configurations. One's a single storage server, second's a dual storage server, and it can also be a JBOD in a single chassis. Uh, there are two, uh, at most, two host uh, CPU microservers that can be plugged in. They, we leverage Mono Lake as we show here. Oh God, here it is. So we leverage Mono Lake and the OCP NICMES. So we uh, design reuse is one of the important tenets when we brought in Bryce Canyon. It's built to be modular and scalable, so we can plug in different versions of the PCBAs in and configure the system into a JBOD storage server, et cetera, et cetera. And as noted here, each storage node can talk to 36 drives to an, through an expander. And this is the high-level overview of components that will be useful to refer to when the folks talk about the advancements in the chassis. Um, the left picture is the front view. The right picture is the top-down view. As you can see, there are two fans in the back. There's a power bus bar. And the cable track along with the chassis sliding rails over here they're useful to pull the whole chassis drawer out, and it helps us to service the hot service, the hard drives, replace hard drives as needed, so that everything keeps running, traffic to the other drives is still going on. Uh, there's, there's also two microservers in the, in the front, and each of them connects to a storage server card, storage controller card in the back, and fans out to 36 drives. And on the left picture, you see a uh, I.O. module that's pointed out in the bottom portion. Uh, there are two I.O. modules that can be plugged in uh, into the front of the chassis. Each one always has a NIC. The uh, portion that's configurable is two M.2s, NVMe drives, or a SAS I.O.C. So why did we build Bryce Canyon? Uh, we wanted it to be Dense, as we uh, mentioned earlier, it's, uh, it's, it packs more drives than our previous generation uh, storage server. It's got 72 drives. We wanted it to be modular as well so that we can replace stuff and configure the system within the same chassis, reduce all the sheet metal costs and redesign costs associated with different SKUs. Uh, we also wanted to improve the system performance so there were certain upgrades made to the chassis and uh, system architecture. Uh, there's also a big improvement in CFM per watt or forced air cooling. I think the industry now knows about CFM per watt. Um, we, have, uh, we have made improvements, drastic improvements from the previous generation, but even from the uh, Bryce Cannon that we released last year, there have been some improvements in CFM per watt, which will be talked later on. Uh, the other thing is also to maintain consistent HD performance over all operating conditions. These are sustained and sustained operating conditions, drawer pullouts shocks uh, that can be done to the chassis. So we'll also touch upon the changes that we made to the system to support all of that. Continuing on why we built Bryce Canyon, uh, there are a lot of highlights in green which show the advancements in the previous generation. But the main takeaway is when you look at the bottommost queue, I'm going to uh, bring about the biggest changes in the bottommost uh, green box. This is the warm storage queue. We have roughly 4x compute power, twice the DRAM, 
And since we pack more drives in the rack, uh, more drives in the chassis and more drives in the rack, we pretty much consume 30% less power per hard drive. And there's also a big improvement in CFM per watt, which I already quoted. At this point, I'll turn over to my friend, Yang. Thanks, Madhuan. Uh, hi, my name is Yang Jiang. I'm a storage engineer. Uh, I will talk about the HDD performance in Briskan. So uh, as Madhuan pointed out, the Briskan is a dense design. A single chassis can contain up to 72 drives. So all drives sitting close to each other. So one of the big challenges for us is how to maintain a consistent HDD performance. We have high requirement on the HDD performance. We qualify hard drives by measuring the performance degradation in either IOPS or throughput. So basically, we measure the we measure the we collect the metrics in the ideal baseline condition. Then we measure the performance degradation for both sustained and non-sustained conditions. So the system is in sustained condition most of the time. Uh, in this case, is the uh, inlet temperature could be 30 degree, all the fans are functional, and the fan speed is around 30% to 40%. So in those conditions, we expect the hard drive degradation should be less than 5%. And there are also some cases for non-sustained conditions. So for non-sustained conditions, I mean sometimes the inlet temperature is very high, or even one or two rotors failed, or even someone pulled out the chassis for servicing. Right, so to represent these cases, we test the drive and the worst setting of fan speed 100%. So in those cases, we expect the high drive performance, where's my pointer? Okay, we expect my high drive performance should be less than 7% by average and 10% maximum. So modern high capacity hard drives are sensitive devices, so they could be very susceptible to the vibrations in the system. So the hard drive in our breeze kind are tested against the acoustic and rotational vibrations. So last year we found out some hard drives could degrade significantly, especially in the back row, uh, which is close to the fan. So we installed like vibration sensors. We also analyzed the PS spectrum from the hard drives. Uh, it turned out to be six kilohertz acoustic noise that caused a problem. So we resolve the issue from uh, multiple angles. Uh, they said the first one is a fan blade shape. So the shape, the, the shape of a fan blade, especially the edge, has a, a great impact on the noise generation. So we change the edge from the straight edge like to this kind of curved edge with a smoother tip. This kind of new design generates much less noise and improves the hard drive performance a lot. And uh, there's no way to totally avoid the noise, so, but we can attenuate it. So we design a honeycomb-like attenuator. We put it between the hard drive and the fans. So the whole size of the attenuator is designed in such a way that it can absorb most of the noise. So, and the last change is a finger guard design. So this change has less impact than the other two but it still can improve the performance by one to two percent. So specifically, we reduce the area of the finger guard by changing from the smaller stamped metal vents to a larger wireframe guard vent. So in the table in this page, you can see this is the bandwidth data in the back row before and after the change. So the first column here is the slot number in the last row. And then it's the second column is the performance degradation with the old fan you will see most of the hard drives degree more than 50%, with even some drives degree even more than 99%. So for this kind of single drives, it simply stop reading and writing. So the third row shows the performance change after we implement all the three changes. So most of the drives, you can see most of the drives are meeting our spec. The worst case is only 2.3% now is far less than the criteria we set for the non-operation conditions. So in summary, with all the changes, fan blade shape, the honeycomb, and the finger guard, we have impl implemented last year, the consistent HD performance is guaranteed with our new breeze kind of system. Now let's turn to the kit for the thermal part. Thank you, Yang. And um, I will go over the thermal improvements that we made over uh, 
uh, over the last year for the, for the Bryce Canyon system. So there are um, three major improvements that we made. Like we made uh, some sort of, like some changes to the system so that we can improve the service time window, and I'll go more in detail about it uh, in the next slide. The second one was, uh, which is um, pretty much important to the data centers, is lowering the CFM per watt because we don't, you know, we want to use the available resources very efficiently. So this was one of. Uh, the major uh, like target, like what we wanted to achieve was uh, to reduce the CFM per watt to an acceptable limit. And then, um, as Yong mentioned, uh, we also made some fan modifications uh, to lower the acoustic vibrations. So service time window, uh, since this is a storage system, it is expected that drives might be failing you know, uh, sometime during its life cycle. And it's not, you know, it, it's quite possible that, you know, one of the drive is going to fail. It's never going to be the case that the entire system, all the drives in the system fail at one time. So hot swap was um, a requirement for Bryce Canyon. And for, so if you look at from the system design point of view, it's pretty easy to achieve hot swap. But what was happening? When you want to swap a drive, you need to pull the drawer outside, outside the rack, and then you remove it. Uh, when the drawer is like in its normal state, uh, the airflow expected is like front to back. But when you pull it out for serviceability, the airflow actually changes and it starts going from top of the chassis to back of the chassis. So there's a lot of bypass uh, we saw that was hap happening. And under extreme conditions, uh, there's a chance that some of the components might be overheating. So we wanted to improve that to give our server techs maximum like, time and not to rush them during their serviceability. So, <clears throat> so we made a number of changes. I've highlighted only the major changes that resulted in uh, like, uh, significant improvements. But there, was, like, there were small um, improvements also we made to squeeze every last bit of like, you know, how much service window we can achieve over here. So when we initially designed the chassis, the first prototype, we saw, we, noted, we tested it, and the service time window was report, uh, recorded to be 3.2 minutes, during which uh, the neck would actually start overheating. So that was our bottleneck. So we made some changes. So we focused over there our attention. So if, if you recall the picture from Bryce Canyon, so you have the drive on the top, and then you have the neck at, at, under um, you have the IOM, the, the NIC cart, under the drives. So as I mentioned earlier, what was happening, the airflow was bypassing from like a top to back. Um, the NIC, it actually, like there was very less amount of air that was going through it, and it resulted in overheating. So we sealed some gaps around it to make sure like there is no leakage or no bypass of air around that area. So that helped us a little bit to, uh, to gain service time window by about two minutes. but. Um, and the major improvement we saw was to, if, if you look at the drive latch, so there was uh, like, uh, like one to two millimeter gap between the drive latch and the drive itself. And that's where the air was actually leaking through. So we added a foam gasket around the drive latch, which would, uh, which would make like a good seal with the drive. And that will avoid any bypassing of air. So that resulted in, again, uh, gaining like additional three minutes of improvement. Um, and the difference between, oops. Uh, difference between like two and three is, uh, you, in, in two we just have a foam gasket, and three we added a mylar to cover uh, the middle area. So initially the intent was to leave this open so that uh, the text could scan the barcode. Um, but we noticed, like you know, drives could have a different form factor. Some drives are flat in the front. Some have, you know, uh, like a curvature in the front. So our service time would vary significantly depending on which kind of drives you are using. So to accomplish like a uniform result, irrespective of uh, what the drive structure is, we added this mylar sheet, which is fully transparent, and we had to run some reliability tests, like whether it will uh, degrade over the period of time under extreme conditions or not, and could we scan through uh, it or not. And after uh, successfully completing all the tests, uh, we were able to extend the service time from 3.2 minutes to greater than 20 minutes at 35 degrees C and uh, at an altitude of 6,000 feet. So this was quite a significant achievement. 
The next thing is uh, we changed the fan blade design. I'll not go too much over it because Young has already went over uh, discussing how we were able to gain our, uh, how we were able to reduce the noise. So here uh, we can see we were able to reduce it by about 3.7 decibels, the acoustic noise. And in doing so, we made sure we do not alter the fan characteristic. It stayed the same, same as uh, what we originally intended there for. And actually, it uh, improved on power consumption. So it's slight, uh, if you see over here, there is a slight drop in power consumption. Um, the other change, uh, the other changes we did is to lower CFM per watt is like after analyzing. So what we did is uh, we tried to itemize like how air flow is moving within the system. So if, it's, uh, if my fans are pulling, let's say for example, 100 CFM, how that 100 CFM is distributed. So we did some analysis, we put some velocity sensors and tried to calculate it. And we noticed that um, like there's a major uh, volume of air that is going through this area, which is the CPU and the expander area. And we had a, like quite, uh, we had about like 20 to 24 degree margin on the CPU, so which was quite, a, obviously which was quite a bit. So we definitely saw there is some room for improvement. And so this is the cage, or this is um, the perf area that goes between um, the monolith components and the expander cards and the cable, uh, the cable arm behind. So what we thought is like, what if we reduce this open area so that will control the amount of air that is going through this middle channel and instead like divert more air where it's required, that is the hard drives. So we did that and in doing so we were further able to reduce the CFM per watt from 0.129 to 0.122 at 30 uh, degrees C and without affecting any components obviously. So we still had like a comfortable margin at the CPU. So if we want to push it, like, you know, want to optimize it further, we, you know, it again depends on what is your comfort level of having what kind of margin. Over here, we are having about 7% margin before any component starts to throttle. With that, I would like to pass it to CK. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is CK. I'm the mechanical engineer. So I'll be talking about the system improvement from the mechanical point of view. So firstly, um, in the data center, when, when the technician is working around our system, we want them to feel safe and sound. As we make major improvement into our system, we're adding more and more things into the box. As a result, our box today tips almost a scale of 200 pounds. So imagine you have a technician on the bench, climbing up to the top of the, rack, uh, the, the level of the rack, and while he's working on the, the, the chassis, all of a sudden he slip and he will grab on the chassis to break his fall. Imagine the rail breaks at that spot. We will have almost 200 pounds of that weight land on top of the technician. And we certainly do not want that to happen. That would be really bad. Uh, because of that, we redesign our rail so to, to become more robust as um, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't only hold 200 pounds, you actually be able to hold another 325 pounds of human weight right in the front of the drawer chassis. With that being said, you know, you guys can do pull-ups, you know, right in front of the chassis, yeah. Um, next, um, uh, we would like our racks and system to be able to deploy rapidly. Rack lock latch plays an important role to keep the 200 pound gorilla in the rack. So during, during, especially during the shipment and um, deployment, or uh, even uh, during seismic event. So to, by making it more robust, we not only be able to save almost 100 pounds of uh, shipping brackets here, you know, we have like all eight of this, so it's, it's almost like a wig of a car. Um, by, by doing that, we're able to save almost 200 pounds of shipping racks, I mean 100 pounds of shipping racks, and then be able to reduce the amount of uh, wig on the pallets. And at the same time, we save uh, transportation costs. Uh, more, more importantly, that um, when, when the racks actually arrives in the data center, the moment we pull it out from the truck, all we need to do is remove it off the pallet. We can roll it into the data hall, and the next thing is we just need to plug it in, energize it, you go online, and we are good to go. And then next, <clears throat> so we want to build our system simple and ergonomics. 
So that way, um, our technician will be able to work on it in a, in a timely manner. Um, especially, as you can see, the, from picture A and picture C, uh, we're actually replacing the thumb screw with a single uh, action actuator, especially on the front panel um, door here, and the handle on the fan tray. So we even changed the baffle into a snap fit uh, configuration where you can just pull it out and push it in in less than a second. Um, the, the, IOM, the IOM or personality module where you used to have two latch, we remove it into one latch where you can actually pull it out and push it in with just one hand. And at the same time, you can drink your coffee on the other hand. Um, all this is pretty much the concept that we call it the one hand toolless operation where you, you, you do not need a single tool to actually um, service and do any maintenance on the box. Uh, we even take it up a notch where um, all the modules on the PCBA can be, can be serviced in a matter of seconds, uh, especially like the M.2 cards, the NIC cards, the SCC card, all we call daughter cards, and even the hard drive latch. Um, where in here, we actually adopted a, a carrierless design where in, in the past, you guys need a tray to house the hard drive. That's no longer valid in our case. So we just need to pull in. By pulling, it, pulling on this latch, you'll be able to pull this out and it will stay on that, on that position. Next, uh, we even challenge ourselves and take it up a notch where um, backplane, which is the single most sophisticated uh, component in our, uh, in our system where it connects all the subcomponents so the subcomponent can actually communicate with each other. Um, all this, the backplane can be removed and re reassembled in less than nine minutes. And during the process, you don't even need to remove all the hard drives. The hard drives stay on the top and you don't have to re-tag and position them. Um, removing the backplane only needs to loosen up four thumb screw here and the whole um, backplane will just slide out. So all this um, changes really redefines how we actually operate in the data center, making us more efficient, you know, time saving, and uh, less downtime for, uh, for during, during the servicing. So next, um, so all the Bryce Canyon specifications are all released in the, in the OCP's website, especially the, especially the electrical and mechanical design package. You guys can find that as well. The OpenBMC uh, firmware, the most updated version, are released in GitHub. Um, that's all we have today. Uh, we can move on to question and answer, and we have 57 seconds. <laughs> Anyone? Okay. So let us know if you have any question. Oh, question over there. Thank you. So the intent is to have the CPU card replaceable over generations of change. Uh, the Yosemite V2 card will have some mechanical interferences at this point, so, but we do not intend to cut in the exact CPU that we have today in Yosemite V2, but we will cut in future generations of CPU into this system. Yes. Uh, that's got to be flexible. It's not. It's not something that we can talk about at this point. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's let's get the next speaker set up. Um, Thank you, guys. Can continue to answer questions while that happens. Um, is Greg Matson here? Anything else? All right. All right. Thank you. We'll be at the booth in case uh, you guys want to check out the hardware and have any other questions.